Hello again. Okay, so now you should have question one, two, and three marked. Number one being out of four, number two being out of eight, and number three being out of eight. We're gonna look at number four. It's gonna be out of three marks, and we're gonna start with kind of reading through it together. So with these questions, remember, you kind of wanna write down what you know, what you have. So starting with two-fifths of the students in a class voted for a trip to the zoo. So therefore, two-fifths voted for a trip to the zoo. We then have one-third voting for a trip to the museum. So one out of three voting for a trip to the museum. Beautiful. So what trip had more votes is what is asked in question A, in part A. So to compare these two fractions, we want to know what had more votes, the zoo or the museum. What we need to do is first to compare them, we need to make the denominators the same because you can't compare something that is different. It's more difficult to do it that way. So we want to make them so they look the same. They're easier for us to compare. So therefore, we're going to do what we did earlier in this assignment. We're going to find our common denominator between a 5 and a 3. So let's do it the way we kind of did at the start of this. List out our factors for 5, our multiples. 5, 10, 15, 20. I'll stop there. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. We should see that 15 is a common number there. So going through... To get to 15, we went 5 multiplied by 1, 2, 3 to get to 15. So do that to the top as well. On this one over here, to get from 3 to 15, we times it by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 3 times 5 gets us to 15. So times the top as well by 5. Your new fractions for the zoo. 2 times 3 is 6. 5 times 3 is your denominator of 15. Go over here to the museum. One times five is five. Three times five is 15, your denominator 15. They are now easier to compare because you have the same denominator. Which one looks bigger? Who had more votes? Well, six over 15 has one more vote than five over 15 does. So more votes in part A. Who had more votes? It is the zoo. Okay, part B, what's the difference of these fractions? Well, our new fractions are six over 15 and five over 15. Can we subtract those two numbers? Sure we can. Put our subtract symbol, 15 carries over. So equals, the denominator carries over because it's already the same, it's already common, over 15. Six subtract five is one. 1 out of 15 is the difference of those two fractions. So part B is 1 over 15. What fraction of the class did not vote? So what part of the class didn't vote? Well, let's look at our fractions again. If we have 6 out of 15 and 5 out of 15, the total number of people voted, we would have to add those together. So let's look, our six and our five becomes 11. Our fraction is out of 15. So that is the total people that did vote. We had 11 out of 15 people vote. So what fraction of the class did not vote? So did not vote, what's left over here between 11 and 15? Well, we have four students out of those 15 that did not vote because an entire class would have been 15 out of 15 and we can go 15 out of 15 to show our work there minus our 11 out of 15 gets us our total number that did not vote was 4 out of 15. Okay so there's question three. It's not as bad when you kind of break it down. You look at your zoo, you look at your museum, then you kind of read through the question, do your work that way. So your total is out of three. A was the zoo, B the difference of fractions was 1 out of 15, and C what percentage of the class did not vote, well that was your 4 out of 15. Okay, let's move on to 5. Question number 5.
Write as many different subtraction questions as you can where the answer is seven over eight. So seven eighths. So seven out of eight is the answer we are trying to get to. And to get to that, there is lots of different ways you could do this. So if you have shown three different ways, if you have three up there, we will say this is out of three, give yourself that mark, but make sure you're checking that they actually work. So some examples of this. Well, if I start with, and I say to myself that I have two fractions over eight, that's probably the easiest way to do this. I have two fractions, to the denominator are eight, they're already common, so I don't have to change them. We slide it over, it's out of eight. What can my two top numbers be? Well, they could be anything that subtract to equal seven. So I could start with 17 over eight minus 10 over eight, because 17 minus 10 equals seven, my denominators stayed the same and slid over. I could change this to anything else that equals seven up there. I could go eight and one. So eight over eight, subtract one over eight is seven over eight. Slide your denominator over because it's already common. Eight subtract one is your seven. How else could you have written this? Well, eight over eight is also one whole. So one whole minus one over eight equals seven over eight, okay? So if you have shown at least three different ways, you can give yourself those three marks. Question four, sorry, question five is out of three. And last question today, please look down to number six. Talking about Charlotte, talking about Devon. So on Saturday, Charlotte played the piano for two six of an hour. On Sunday, Charlotte increased that time she played by one third of an hour. Okay, so Charlotte's got two six and then she increases it by one third. On Saturday, our guy Devon, our boy Devon, played the violin for two thirds of an hour. And then on Sunday, Devon increased that time he plays by two twelfths. So he starts out on Saturday for two thirds of the hour, increases that time on Sunday by two twelfths. Who played for longer on Sunday? So to figure that out, to answer part A of question number six, we need to put their times together separately. So we need to figure out how much in total did Charlotte play on Sunday? Then we need to figure out how much in total did Devin play on Sunday? So let's look at Charlotte over here, then we'll look at Devin over here. So Charlotte, on Saturday she's got two six of an hour. And then on Sunday she increases that. So increases that as addition, plus one third of an hour. And then on the other side here, Devin plays on Saturday for two thirds and he increases that by two twelfths. I'm just gonna make sure you can still see that over there. Looks okay. 